It's an emotional experience, all right. Uh, of course, many people are impressed by technique and style and what they consider skill, I suppose. That's, that's fine, it's all very nice, there's a place for it. But it, it's really last on the list, you know? Uh, originality, creativity. That's, look it up in a dictionary. The definition of artist is a creative person who is totally honest and original. Bingo. If you want to appear to be an artist, and you want to convince me that you're an artist, I don't care how detailed it is, I don't care whether it's less than perfect. If it's original, it comes from the heart, and makes a statement that appeals to people like me emotionally, I just love you to death. That's my recommendation. Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite artists of all time, Frank Frazetta. I feel like if you have a channel that talks about art and artwork and comics or any kind of artwork, whatever it may be, Frazetta is one of those guys where I think you have to cover his work no matter what kind of art you cover. Because the guy is so iconic and it really is a crime to not have a Frazetta video. And I have not had a Frazetta video up to this point. And I wanted to show off my entire collection of Frazetta books. Um, I have a, some nice Frazetta books. I don't have the new Tashin book because I just didn't want to spend like $350 on this massive book that's the size of fucking Mount Everest. Um, but we're going to go through some Frazetta stuff. Um, there is his sketchbooks uh, that I have. Um, I believe there is some stuff from what I can remember that repeats. So... If there's some repeating stuff, I do apologize. And if I talk about something twice, I apologize. But I just wanted to do a long video that you could like watch and enjoy some Frazetta. Because Frazetta is a god in the art world. Frazetta is a weird one. I didn't know about... Well, not a weird one, but it's weird. I didn't know about Frank Frazetta until I started wanting to draw. Um, I'd never seen his artwork before until I started to want to draw. Once I started to want to draw, many, many years ago, it's like it popped up. Like, it just came out of nowhere. It's like this divine intervention thing where, like... But it happens to every artist. Um, Rosetta is just amazing. So, we're going to go through Sketchbook Volume 2 before we go through Sketchbook Volume 1 because I like to do things in order. Not, not at all. Um... I have my one bugaboo is I hate this fucking glossy paper. I can't stand it. Please, people, stop making shit into glossy paper. I can't stand it. We have the iconic Conan uh, painting that I really... I mean, other than Death Dealer, I think this is kind of what I associate Frazetta with. I mean, and it's so... And the funniest thing about it is it's such a simple composition and such a simple pose there's nothing crazy or dynamic i mean you get this twist from our lady down here but other than that you're not getting much dynamism here but it is so iconic and it's so beautiful and it's so simple it's it's just yeah and then we will open up and we see all kind of these we get some finished pieces and then uh, I don't know if he gave his artwork to Molly Hatchet to use or what, but uh, I guess Molly Hatchet was big on Rosetta. I don't, I don't even know if I can name a Molly Hatchet song. I'm sure that there's probably one that I know. So we get some Burrow stuff, which I believe is Tarzan. And I mean, we look at this. I mean, come on, that is beauty right there. Um, it looks Rosetta to me looks like a looks like a Heinrich Clay drawing that also has some Bridgman in it. I mean, that's really how I feel about it. He has like the structure of Bridgman and the the animated movement motion 
force, or however you want to call it, of Heinrich Clay. And if there are two artists that you want to uh, uh, really learn from and kind of put it together, which now you're not going to be able to do that because your artwork's just going to look like Frank Rosetta if you do. Uh, those are those are great choices, and Frazetta knew that, and he decided to do that, and he made some amazing pieces. Uh, one of the things I will point out about Frazetta is, and I noticed this in a lot of his stuff, proportion was never the most important thing, because you get funny proportions sometimes. But I mean, come on. Sometimes the proportions are perfect. A lot of the times, proportions are, proportions are perfect. But then there's some times where it's like the proportions are a bit weird. So, um, but yeah, I mean, his stuff looks beautiful regardless. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, come on. I love these little sketches. The, the, the thing that I love about this book is, and don't misconstrue this when I say this, because I don't think my artwork looks anything like Frank Frazetta. Frank Frazetta, Frank Frazetta's, you could take Frank Frazetta out of his corpse now his lifeless body out of his corpse and he could draw better than I could now. And I, I'm sorry if that offends anybody who, who gets offended when people say things about the dead, but the dude, unbelievable fucking artist, uh, way better than most people ever will be in a hundred million lifetimes. But it's very nice to look at stuff like this because when you're in that early stage and you're trying to figure things out, sometimes your artwork, your, your early stages will look like this, which means you're going in the right direction which is nice. If Frank Frazetta is doing stuff and you're kind of doing very similar stuff, you're in the right company. You're in the, you're in the right ballpark. You're getting there. And then of course, when he adds the form to it and makes it solid, that's when it all goes to shit for you. And then you look in the mirror and go, man, I'm never going to become an artist. And, uh, you may not, but keep trying, you know, but I guess if you make art, you're an artist, right? If you, if you attempt to make art, you try to understand art. Um, you know, if you learn how to connect a one point box to a vanishing point or a box, whatever, you're drawing a box in one point perspective, to me, you're an artist because you figured something out that no, the average person doesn't know. And, uh, but anyways, we're talking about Frank Frazetta here. Beautiful artwork. I mean, these are sketches here. Um, there's like little stories and stuff where like, like they'll say like, this was done on a napkin or something like that. And you're like, are you, f this dude's doing this on a fucking napkin. I mean, just what an amazing artist. Come on now. Like look at the beauty there. And I mean, he, he's drawing such cool fucking animals like gorillas, lions, tigers, monkeys. I mean, the dude i'd love that by the way that again that's kind of shows like the early stages hopefully you can see it of a drawing to kind of get there and then you get there then you get there and then you get there i love looking at that stuff as he's kind of like laying the color down trying to figure out what the color is and then boom you get this beautiful finished piece that started here started in this very simple gesture sorry hold on i'll try to show you very simple gesture not even gesture. It looks actually, there's not much gesture going on there. I mean, it's pretty much just a straight up and down drawing. There's a slight movement to those hips, but I mean, just beauty. And sometimes when I'm drawing, I always think that things need to look super dynamic. And then what ends up happening is my guy looks like fucking rubber band or something. You don't need to do, I mean, obviously it, it's cool if you can, you want to do like a like a crazy foreshortened pose like a Todd McFarlane or something, that's cool too. But some of the best artists in the world, there's some dynamic movement going on there, but it's not insane. It's kind of, they figure out how to do it just subtly enough to get that movement for the eye to pick up. And Frazetta was a master at that. Frazetta was a master at getting those beautiful fucking simple gestures and obviously shape. Shape was his big thing and composition. Now we got some life drawings. I, whatever, we'll take a look at this. We'll kind of breeze through this real quick. These are cool, but I want to see, you know, sword and sorcery, you know, but I mean, superb artist. I did a, a video on uh, Joe Kubert, uh, gesture drawings and things like that. It looks very similar to this. I mean, yeah, it's just, you're doing your life. You're looking at life. And you have to draw a lot of these these things that may seem mundane 
to some to kind of get to the point where you can draw these insane things like this or this. And then, of course, we go back to Conan. Or we're in Conan, actually. We never looked at Conan. We were at Tarzan before. And I, I, it, the one thing about Conan, the, the shame about Conan is, is Robert E. Howard never got to see what Conan would look like. Like, realizes like a real thing. Like, it, like, and, and Frazetta, Frazetta kind of, to me, gave Conan that look. He kind of just took Tarzan and was like, I'm going to make this character look like a bad boy Tarzan. And he did. Uh, I don't know if there was an artist who did Conan before him. I'm not sure. I'm sure there probably was. And they probably... But they're, when I think Conan, I think about Frazetta and Bushema. And Bushema, I think, was thinking about Frazetta. Um, but man, do I love these. I love just kind of these... He's doing these sketches, getting to the point. I love it when he does the arms overlapping the uh, rib cage. It looks funny, but it's cool. Like this one. <laughs> don't think that's correct anatomy going on there but it doesn't need to be totally correct i mean i don't know where the where's the rib cage but it looks cool i dig it i really do dig it and then we get into death dealer um again i don't know what when we go through one hopefully there isn't a lot of uh like we're re-looking at stuff. I can't remember. But, uh, I mean, you get some cool stuff. You get the finished pieces, like what you would get on the novels. And then you get kind of these sketches. I mean, come on, look at that. Beauty, beauty, beauty right there. And, man, I love looking at stuff like that. It's very... Um, it, it, it's all about movement. It's all about... I've always said, and I, and I do feel this, the most important thing that an artist can do is get it on the page it doesn't matter how squiggly or crazy or like animalistic it looks i mean i mean you just got it sometimes you just got to put down these scribbles to get to where you need to go to understand the movement that's going on but this will probably end up being either something that we end up turning into something that we know and love or maybe it's just thrown to the corner and whatever that's fine but the most important thing is get it on the page. We get some of his older stuff when he's kind of doing, like, I'm guessing advertisement work. I'm not into Frazetta's um, comic work. We do have a, I do have a book of his comic work. Um, I'll probably say that now. And then when I get into his comic work, I'll be like, oh my God, it looks amazing. But uh, I'm not into this cartoony advertisement shit. And I believe he does some, adver like, excuse me, he does some, like, cartoony stuff when he does comics at one point. I don't know, I'm more into this stuff, man. I'm more into, like, when he finds out, like, oh, yeah, I'm this insanely talented artist who, uh, or illustrator, if you want to call it, whatever you want. I, I consider him a fine artist to me. But he's just an artist. And I don't really think that we should um, kind of um, segregate people in a certain areas. You're an artist, you draw, whatever, you're an artist. You paint, you're an artist. This is actually my favorite Frank Rosetta piece, and you want to talk about fucking simple? This is even more simple uh, than the Conan one. I mean, we're stiff as a fucking board here. But there's something about this piece. This is my favorite Frank Rosetta piece ever. And I don't know why I like it so much. I don't know if it's just because it's a cool character design or what, but or the color. What's going on here? Why I love it so much, but I really do love it. Come on, look at that. Beauty right there. I have no idea who Brack the Barbarian is. I have no idea. I don't know if it's just kind of like a another character to be like, oh, here's my own Conan the Barbarian. I don't know. I imagine there were probably a lot of people. Now Conan's in the... I believe Conan's in the public domain, but maybe there are a lot of people like, man, Conan's really cool, but he's not in the public domain, so I'll make my own. Um... Because for some reason, I, I and mean, rightfully so, Conan just really took off, and yeah, I think they have the um, the uh, awesome battle Battlefield Earth, I think it's called, cover in one of these books, which I also love that as well. Man, I love that. Just man, just the anatomy going on there, like the deltoid, like 
locking into that bicep. And the other thing is, is I wish I had brought out my Bridgman books, but there's a literal Bridgman drawing in the Bridgman anatomy book that squares out that bicep exactly like that. So this is a guy who's definitely studying Bridgman. There's no doubt about it. There's no question about it. How everything locks in beautifully and overlaps. Like like the the deltoid overlaps where that uh, where that bicep comes in, and then you get that muscle. I forget the name of it that goes in between the bicep and the tricep and kind of leads up to your forearm. And all he's doing is he's using shapes to kind of lock it in there to make it feel solid. And it's just beauty when you look at it. I mean, Frazetta just was the absolute and total master of that. I love the reusage of the artwork to like, here's my computer parts or whatever. I just think that's funny. Um, and then we, this reminds me more of his comic book work, but it's very, it's very cool. Dig it, dig it a lot. Um, yeah. And then we've got him with uh, Clint Eastwood, which I believe in the other book, there's a picture of him and Clint Eastwood as well. He wants, and they want, the Frazetta family wants you to know, Frank hung out with Clint Eastwood. I mean, if Frank was cool enough, if he never hung out with fucking Clint Eastwood, he would still be cool. Um, but yeah, just, man, fire and ice stuff. Really love it. I mean, I love drawings like this. Just, man, look at those faces. Just the amount of line going in there with like the wrinkles and he's getting all the all the muscles of the face and the movement of the face. I mean, it's just really, really great stuff. I mean, come on, look at this stuff. It's so cool. So beautiful. I mean, these are just like, I don't know if these are just like concept art that's going to be used for the movie. I'm not sure. Get some funny like movement and animation going on there man look at that that's beautiful right there i love what i love it when frank draws a very slim character more so than a big bulky character and then we get some lord of the rings stuff i think there's lord of the rings in the other book as well there's a lot of um well you'll uh, you'll see when i go through it but uh there's some golem here remember I don't think there was a lot of Lord of the Ring art, Lord of the Rings artwork that was out at this time, and uh, I think Frank's sort of bringing these characters to life and showing you them. Very famous uh, art in the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings series. Man, beautiful stuff. And then we have some. Uh, just interesting drawings here. I don't know if he's just kind of, yeah, I don't, I don't know what this is for. Man, look at that. The amount of black that's going on there. Like, ballsy stuff. And I love how you can see the lines of the fur. Yeah. I always get nervous when I do silhouettes, because silhouettes, I love how you even see this. Like, this is how he constructs the head. At least in this drawing. I mean, you, just like a little construction like that. Super important stuff. Um, I don't know if he constructs a head exactly like that every time. But yeah, I mean, you, sorry. I'm going to go back to this. Um, he's showing that side plane of that head. For sure. Um, man. What a great drawing there. Frank Frazetta. Uh, the character that I'm assuming is based off of Frank Frazetta. Dude did not own a shirt that fit him though. A little too tight, huh? Well, little, little, I mean, we get a lot of a lot of abs showing off there, huh? I mean, even that. Come on, we see his belly button. There, I guess it fits normal. And then we get some personal works. Where, my goodness, look at that! I don't know what this was going to be used for. You can see so much Bridgman in there, and that cube of that pelvis, and then that connecting connecting of that leg. You're going to hear a lot about Bridgman, for sure, when I talk about Frazetta, because you can't talk about Frazetta without talking about Bridgman. Also, I'm going to be honest with you, and, and I don't care. I love the way that fucking Frazetta drew, drew women. Just drew the perfect woman, you know? Like, just, yeah, great, 
Great drawing. Great drawings of women. All right, so we're going to take a look at sketchbook two. I have a lot of Frazettas. It's going to be quite a long video, so... I'm no, I know nobody's going to watch the entire thing. If you do, that'd be super rad, and thank you so much, but I'm not going to rush you this, uh, because... I want this to kind of be my Frazetta video showing off his stuff for now. I may add to this, I may do a part two, but as of right now, this is going to be the only Frazetta video that I do. I could probably separate these into multiple videos, but why not do it all in one video? I don't know. Maybe that's a foolish decision, but I don't really care. And we start out with, man, look at that. Remember how I said I love the way he draws women? Dude drew... Awesome, awesome women. Just a great, great illustrator. So we might get some repeats in here. Um, it's very possible. But, uh... Man. Love that. Love the hatching. Love the... I just love the form, the hatching, the way he drew animals again. Um, I was watching a video of him. He said he he has no knowledge of uh, of lions and tigers and things like that, but somehow he knows how to draw them. That's mind blowing if that's true. But I think sometimes people make a myth, you know. But I guess if you look at enough pictures of a lion, you know, and you have that artistic ability to kind of see the shapes, you know. You're eventually going to learn how to draw a lion, right? I mean, how many interactions do we have with lions every day and tigers? Never. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, we get these beautiful um, thumbnail drawings, kind of trying to figure things out. And then, of course, we get here with the finished piece. We're kind of going backwards here, trying different poses. Again, I love the way that he draws the preliminary stuff because it's very similar to the stuff that I do in the preliminary uh stages of drawing and then you get and then somewhere around the bend you get to frazetta and uh yeah get some life drawings in here there's a lot more in here so we'll kind of just go through these really quickly again this is kind of what you need to do as an artist you have to practice these you have to draw these mundane things i see a lot of like bruce tim here looks like bruce tim a bit um, but you get a lot of these. You're going to have to do a lot of these to kind of get to being an artist. So there's definitely repeats in this, I believe. Um, but it's, it was cool that they added this, you know, just to kind of show you how Frank was uh, practicing even some of the most mundane stuff that may not be very pleasing to the eye. Uh, and then we get another chapter on Conan and uh, there's our guy right there young and spry at the time and uh, man I love looking at like the he's using watercolors here to kind of get how he wants the color to look he's trying different compositions you get the finished piece here he's showing like the axe above the shoulder jumping I mean even like something as simple as that you're getting that ball of the torso that pelvis and he's twisting you can learn a lot from looking at something like this how the body twists and once you understand these things it's beautiful stuff man you really can kind of relate to this it's kind of like drawing is like a language you know like learning a foreign language and once you can kind of understand the language you can learn a lot from people like Frazetta the one thing that I will tell any artist is as much as you love Frazetta, don't ever become a knockoff of Frazetta. Unless your name is Boris Vallejo, then you can get away with it. Because Boris Vallejo is insane. So is his wife, uh, Julie Julie Bell, I think her name is. She's also an awesome artist. But I think she's more unique than, uh, than, than, than Vallejo is. Sometimes I feel like Vallejo is just a complete knockoff of Frazetta. But man, does his stuff look fucking cool. I, I, I'm not going to knock Vallejo because dude's unbelievable. Um... And you shouldn't knock Vallejo either if you if you kind of like, eh, he's just a rip off of his now he's some sometimes yes but other times he does some very interesting stuff anyways but this is not a video about 
Boris Alejo. This is a video about Frank Frazetta. And, uh, yeah, just, again, more beautiful stuff. I mean, I love just looking at stuff like this. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention, there's an Etsy store where you can pick up all these books because all these books are, like, fucking out of print. And I guess his, like, granddaughter or something. Sorry for... Her name is Danielle, uh, I believe. Uh, sorry for sending so many people your way. But uh, she actually has a bunch of his books uh, in an Etsy store. So if you're kind of looking for these... Like, I know that the second one, the second Frazetta uh, sketchbook was, like... It's completely out of print. People charge, like, hundreds of dollars for it. She sells it for 40 bucks, And she sells the first one for, like, 25 It's in soft cover. It's not hard cover, but... She has all the stuff, all the Frazetta stuff. So I'll leave a link down in the link below so you can check that out. Think of that as like a, a, a thank you for uh, getting this far into the video. And trust me, we got way more. This is probably going to be like a fucking two hour video. Hopefully it's not. But man, it's Frazetta. Look how beautiful Frazetta. I mean, come on, look at that composition. Look how big that dinosaur looks. So great at proportion, man. Like uh, like a proportion of like this giant dinosaur. And these these very, you know... I don't know if there's like an animation going on. Like he's trying to figure out the better... I don't know. But uh, man, look at him falling. So cool. I don't know what way he's falling. Because it looks like his feet are turned this way. But his head is turned... I don't... If somebody can explain to me what that motion is, I good luck. Um, but yeah, man, jeez, got some Flash Gordon work. Obviously inspired. We have one Flash Gordon drawing, so there you go. Um, isn't that is that Alex Raymond? I believe who did Flash Gordon. Um, but I guess Frazetta did some Flash Gordon stuff, and then we get into Death Dealer, of course, the iconic Death Dealer. And man, I love that. You get to see the sketch, and then you get to see the finished piece. And man, in that sketching process, he's got that horse coming and pretty much down pat. When you're an artist, you got to learn to draw everything, even if you don't ever want to draw a horse. You never know when you're going to be asked to draw a horse. You never know when you're going to want to draw a horse. You never know when you're going to be sitting down listening to music. And you have the best story about a horse ever. And then you got to learn to draw a horse. So, might as well start now. Also, giant lizards. I'm going to draw those, too. They don't hurt. And some eerie covers here. I thought there was a lot of stuff that... Uh, maybe there isn't a lot of stuff that uh, repeats. So, this is all original stuff so far. Um, man. Beautiful stuff. Man, look at those bigger drawings there. I imagine that was probably, like, an hour work for him. And for somebody like me, that would be all day. And it wouldn't look that good here on the le uh, left here. I had to get my, I had to remember my left and my right for a second. Get a little nervous when you make these videos because you're like, oh, people are, might watch this. Um, and then you get cool, you know, just, I love looking at that preliminary stuff. Preliminary stuff will teach you so much. Uh, Wolf Mother, I guess, used his artwork. Um, this must have been like right before he died. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to be a cool band that everybody remembers one song of, um, you just present a painting and, uh, maybe you'll sell some, sell some, uh, copies of your album. I don't know. I mean, you can get Frazetta in giant size, which is cool. Um, I mean, again, just beautiful preliminary stuff. We're getting the colors here. We're getting kind of working it out, trying to figure it out. Yeah, man, beautiful stuff. I mean, look at that. Come on now. I keep saying come on now, but Jesus. How cool is that? Again, it's just like this giant fucking gorilla. And this woman running away. And he just towers over her like King Kong size. Man. That's another one. I imagine they were probably making different King Kongs. Because King Kong was in the domain at the time. Or wasn't in the domain at the time, excuse me. Man, look at those right there. God, that shading and that lighting. Very interesting. I don't know where the light source is there. I don't know. That's the other thing. is like when you look at artists like this, you can learn a lot about lighting too. Because I don't know where the light source is there. So you got a 
you gotta practice it. You gotta take a look at it and figure out where your light source would be. Um, I probably sound like a moron. It's probably like right in front of her face, but whatever. I would get some comic book work here, which is pretty cool. Um, comic book covers. Um, yeah, I mean, it's you never really see Frank Frazetta drawings with a gun, so it's nice when you when you see one. But he still has that fantasy uh, element going on, which is very cool. Oh, do we have the Elron Hubbard stuff now? Very, uh, very spicy decision to uh, do some work with L. Ron Hubbard. Because uh, Ellen Hubbard is a very controversial figure, or was a controversial figure, but I guess Rosetta was got paid the right amount and said, fuck it, I'll do it. And no matter how crazy you are, L. L. Ron. Um, and then we get the cover of Rosetta. We do not have the Battlefield Earth fucking rad cover. Are you serious? How could you leave that out? It's really rad. I, I might put it on the screen if I feel like editing. I probably will. There's a super rad cover. Um, I'm actually going to look at the times. So okay, I have the time in my head where I can put that up. But uh, yeah, there's a super rad L. Ron Hubbard uh, Battlefield Earth cover that's uh, it's not in here. I wish it was. Get some more of the silhouette stuff and kind of, I don't know if this is just like he's drawing life or whatever, or I mean, this is like a comic that he did. I'm not sure. Um, man, again, just fucking beautiful i mean that bridge he's doing bridgman right there but he's instead of using like fairies the thing about frazetta is frazetta woman soft man hard that's all you need to know when you look at frazetta but he's still using those bridgman tactics he's still getting that cube and then he's softening that cube and then he's getting that leg that goes in there like a like an action figure like it pops right in to that pelvis man beautiful stuff just love it man look at that very cool a naked woman on a horse why not right and he's changing the color and trying to get in i think he i think that's like watercolor there and then he tries to get it to like oil or acrylic or whatever he's using and then uh, some gesture drawings of, of ladies beautiful drawings of cats and stuff like that it's fun to see him do this kind of stuff like the more cartoony stuff and then you get like this very sketchy solid forms down there i, I love it when frazetta just lets the pen skate that's my favorite frazetta that's the kind of frazetta that i really love and uh, whenever you see it it reminds me so much of heinrich clay i did a video on heinrich clay um who i'm assuming Rosetta knew who the fuck he was, for sure. There's no way he didn't. And then we finish it with a beautiful piece there. Of what looks like Jared Leto from... No, it's Jesus. Anyways. Uh, now, we have uh, the living legend, Rosetta. Which uh, is an interesting one, because it shows more of his comic book work. And then we get some more finished pieces in here and then i got one after that which i'm very excited about which i believe might be my favorite which we will look at when we when i will show you when we look at it and then we'll finish off with his finished pieces that was put out by vanguard because like i said i i did not buy the tashin book so we still got a lot more a lot more books to go through my first gripe man why, why are we using glue oh it's already falling apart Oh, I don't, oh, I don't like that. I don't like glue. I don't like glue binding at all. I fucking hate glue binding. This book is pretty much going to fall apart, possibly as I'm going through it. I guess they didn't make books to last back in the day. So uh, I'm going to try to go through this without destroying my Frazetta book. Again, this is available on um, the Etsy store. That'll show you hopefully the glue in your book is better, binded better. Um, this we kind of get into a little bit more stuff of like Frank when he was young and stuff like that. Uh, you know, that's cool and all. Uh, we get some uh, comic book work, uh, which is rad. Love it. Um, him riding a motorcycle. Because why, why would he not be riding a motorcycle? This looks like something out of like EC or something. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, in case you want to see Frank without a shirt on, there you go. 
install for you. And then beautiful ladies. And then what I believe is a, a ripoff of um, Tarzan with um, very interesting caricatures of uh, people of color. Uh, times were different back then, my friends. Times were very different. I, I, I always look at this and it just, it, it there's, there's another Frazetta, um, uh, piece that does something very similar to this. And it just pisses me off every time I see it. Cause the arms just don't look like they're like the head. Maybe it's a head. Something doesn't look right. Um, it looks great, but it just feels like something is off. And uh, it's weird looking, but it looks cool. So, and then we get the awesome uh, muscles of the legs there. His comic book work is interesting to me because it's like, it, I don't know. It's it's weird. It's, is he a comic book artist to me? I don't think he is. I don't think he's going to make my top 100 comic book artist list. He did comics. But I don't know if I consider his this. It, I don't know. I don't. I have to think it over. I don't know. But he drew some great fucking comics. I'll definitely tell you that. Uh, reuse this again. Of our, our dude loves to spread his arms out and terrify people. I guess. And I love that face there. It's like such a Joker face there. I don't know if you can see it, but it, it looks interesting. Um, there's some panels that just look so realistic, and I don't know if he's. If he's tracing i don't know but then there's some that look more i don't know it's it's very interesting but yeah it's, it's cool to look at his comic book work because it's beautiful stuff it's it's very cool to see because i think frank for i've said this before and I don't, I don't know what video i said it in one of my videos frank for could tell more tell tell a story in one painting better than Pretty much any comic book writer right now or artist in my opinion could tell in 24 pages or 32 pages or 48 pages of comics he had this master ability to tell a story and that's what i love one of the things i love about presetta but his comic book work i don't know what i think about it i don't know i kind of like to see the individual pieces but maybe i'm just a simpleton and that's very possible but man i mean look at this stuff beautiful stuff i mean come on look at that with the they're in space and i don't know if i don't know if there's gravity up there i'm assuming there is i don't know and I, that looks like a paste up of like a ship and he's drawing these two guys in there i don't know but it's it's rad I and mean, maybe the dudes are put pasted up i don't know and then you get more of this like cartoony stuff i'd like to see him kind of play with his style and he's trying to figure out his style and that's very like a Milton Kniff kind of thing or like an Alex Raymond kind of thing so I dig that and then of course we get into these awesome awesome black and white pieces here man the way he draws that fur man look at that beauty beauty on the pages and of course that's the cover of our sketchbook 2 which by the way i don't think was in that book unless it was and i just totally missed it but man that hatching he's doing like the the contour hat like he's going around the contours and, and and showing you the form and how the form is moving beautiful 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 stuff and so important so important if you're learning to draw and learning to create you can you can learn more from looking at something like that and you can learn from probably most uh, most reference books or something like that. Because it's really hard. Some some books are reference books. Some books are, are learning books. It's just, you know, you don't know what's reference and what's... It just it gets very confusing when you're trying to learn to be an artist. Because you're so lost. You don't know where to start. And uh, you can learn a lot from looking at somebody like Rosetta. Especially when you get into that intermediate level. Oh, boy, is Frazetta really important. Frazetta is unbelievable. Frazetta to me is... Frazetta is like if you were... If you had to take a math test. And you had to understand all the answers were there. Like in front of you. 
uh, like the answer to the math test, but you just had to figure out like how you would show the work. Does that make any sense? But not actually, that's not a good analogy. It's like Frank, all the answers are there. When you look at a Frank Frazetta picture or drawing long enough and you have intermediate understanding of art and how to draw and at least from a drawing standpoint, I'm, I'm not good with color. I'm sure it's probably there with color as well. He shows you everything that you're confused about. Like he shows you how to perfectly get everything to connect. Like he shows you how that scapula connects into that arm. And he shows you where um, the back of the neck is. And he shows you where the trapezius is supposed to connect. And it, and where the forms connect and like what way the form is going and the shapes of the form like he he uses beautiful shape and connecting i i believe that you can learn at an intermediate level everything about about figure drawing at an intermediate level by the way not at the beginner level with a copy of a bridgman book i have around here somewhere they may pick out I actually have it right behind me. Shit, I wish I'd shown it. I'll show that thing that I was showing before um, at the end of the video. But if you have this and you have this, you'll learn so much about drawing. It's insane. But you have to be at that intermediate level, which means you need to understand things like perspective, basic anatomy. And what is basic anatomy? Learning landmarks, learning where the scapula is, what the scapula is, learning the collarbone or the clavicle, learning the, you know, the ulna and the radius and, you know, learn all those bits and pieces and how the pelvis moves opposite of the torso when you're trying to get a twist. Like, understand those things. And then you go to Frazetta and this... You're fucking golden, man. You are golden. My book is going to rip, by the way. I told you. It's going to break before the end of this video. This will not be the first time I've destroyed a book, by the way. Uh, this will not be the first time. I And I don't even treat my books that poorly. Um, don't, glue your, don't glue your books. But anyways, let's get back to Rosetta. You've seen this one already. There's some... There's some... Uh, there's some stuff here I've already seen. That's beautiful, man. Like him getting lifted up by that monkey that's the other thing about Frazetta sorry Frazetta always always creates the thing that happens before the tragedy or before the win and like this come on this dude is dead right let's be honest this dude is fucking dead right but he's not showing you the dude dying or this guy's dead right he's not showing the guy dying right but he's showing you right before the death which actually is way fucking more more metal and cooler, in my opinion. So, anyway, this is gonna be a long video. We're like almost, we're already 41 minutes in. So, I love, 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 love this one. This one is like one of my favorites as well. It's the it's the turn of that head, the the lines that are going. Nope, turned off my mic. Hello. Uh, it's the lines going around the torso. It's just beautiful stuff. And man. There you go again. That form of that elbow there. How that locks in. Get yourself a copy of Bridgman. You're all good to go. I love that too. That's a beautiful, beautiful piece as well. Man. Just so much beauty going on there. I love how he draws like these creatures that are like very human-like. Again, before the tragedy, you know. That, that that cheetah i'm assuming has not bitten into that gazelle uh quite yet but he's about to and uh frank shows you before the tragedy and uh that's an art that uh, not many can do that's why he was brilliant in comics i'm just not into into his comics i don't know i don't know i just i just like his original stuff we get a thing of gandalf here i'm assuming with uh what looks like some I don't know. They're definitely not hobbits. Get some more uh, hobbits and golem here. Uh, that looks like probably Samwise. Maybe Frodo. Uh, almost about to get attacked by a wolf. Man. God. 
I, I'm assuming those are supposed to be the orcs. Orcs? I don't know. Did orcs look like they do now? At the time? He just, um, he just made them look like buff dudes with, uh, with crazy jawlines. I love this one, too. This one. This one. As I break my book. This is another one. And the reason why I love this one. You get this amazing showing of how the arm works. How it flows. You get the deltoid. You get the bicep. And you're going into the... You're going into the forearm. Down to the wrist. He is showing you boom, 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 boom. He's showing you that beautiful flow of the arm. And then, of course, we get this. I Again, I hate the turning of the page. I don't want to do it, but it's beautiful. But you need to know. And then, come on, man. Oh. And that looks great, too. Man. He wasn't afraid to show dude butts. So, if anybody's like, oh, you want to draw women and scandally clad. He draws dudes. I mean, I don't think I've seen a dude with a shirt on in this entire book. So there you go. And, uh, man, just looks badass. As f I, I love... That looks like a Mignola drawing to me. A bit. Like, I can definitely see where Mignola is like a Frazetta freaking fanatic. Yeah. Just wonderful stuff. I mean, Frank is... Yeah. And of course, we got Frank hitting a golf ball. Frank hanging out with uh, Quinn Eastwood again, just in case you're wondering. You know, fucking uh, Adrian. Adrian! Uh, Stallone standing in front of a Conan picture is, like, absurd. To me. I don't know if there was one point where they're like, yeah, we're gonna have you like Conan, and then I ended up going to Schwarzenegger. I don't know. And then, of course, we end on Conan. Which looked like it was photocopied, but that's okay. Times are different. And then we get this extremely odd close-up of Frank Frazetta, which looks like he's moving at the time. It's like somebody was just like, can I take a picture of you real quick? And he was just like, yeah, fucking hurry up. Anyways. We have my favorite book, which is this book. And we're going to try to move the camera around. I may have to... Uh, hopefully we can do this without me having to edit shit out. But there's no guarantee that I won't have to edit it out. Um, hold on. there we go. All right. So this is my favorite book because it's literally just more of his sketches, by the way, whoever did the cover of this book, beautiful work. This is such a cool feeling book. This book feels so cool. Um, it feels like it's like wrapped in a pillow. It's very interesting. And then of course we have Frank doing Frank Frazetta stuff. It looks like he is holding something in his hand and he's in the woods so there you go you know i don't know it'd be cooler if he was like holding an axe and you thought he was gonna anyways um yeah this is uh more rough stuff of frank which i enjoyed looking at again beautiful hatching and just using line to sort of Sometimes he uses it for shading. Sometimes he uses it for showing you what directions he's going in. There's a piece in here like this. I wish this had been shown to me more blown up than this tiny little piece here. Uh, we get like background stuff. I, I'm sorry. I, as cool as that is, I want to look at the drawings because I'm a very simple, simple person. Again, looking at how an artist gets to the point, like gets, gets thinks on the page to get to the point where you get to here very useful stuff because when you're trying to learn this stuff and this is where you start you feel helpless because you feel like my stuff is never going to look this good reality of the situation is you got to learn how to do this get those forms in and learn that perspective and then you're going to be drawn maybe not like Frazetta but you're going to be drawn pretty damn good um, yeah I mean this is a rad book super cool man great drawings i just I, I do like it when he draws a very a, a slimmer body i don't know i just think it looks better man i mean he's figuring it all out in that 
that kind of thumbnail stage. And look at that. Look at all that action going on there. God, look at that right there. Beauty. Great form going on there. Again, women very soft, men very solid. I love looking at stuff like this. I really do. I mean, come on. Famous. Famous cover there. Showing you how he kind of got there. Very, uh, a very wide man on the back there, huh? Imagine that one didn't make it very far. Okay, so we can actually take a look at this. So, I'll show this off now. Do you see? Hopefully I can find the page. Actually, I gotta find the page, which is gonna be annoying. Okay, I can't find it. It's probably in the smaller book. So that was worthless. But there is a drawing in a Bridgman book that is literally exactly like that. And it's just like the, that cute. You can definitely see that plane change there. And he's showing it to you. How you just get that perfect cube and that plane change. Very useful stuff. Man. I love me some Frazetta. I really just... Every time I look at Frazetta, it makes me want to draw more and more and more. It's like... It, drawing is funny because, like, there was a time where I wanted to be a musician. And I've probably said this already in a video, so if you've heard this before, I do apologize. But there's a time in my life where I wanted to be a musician. Anytime I would see, like, I wanted to be a drummer. And I was a big fan of John Bonham. And when I would look at John Bonham drumming, it made me want to quit drumming. Because I was like, I'm never going to be that good. When I look at Frazetta or like Bushama or something like that, some of my favorite artists in Barry Windsor Smith, their stuff makes me want to draw. I don't know why that is. But I think I pro it's probably because I understand drawing more than I understood being a musician. Because I've dedicated so much time to drawing that it, I, I, I know I see what they're doing. Which is nice. And Frazetta, like I said, he's putting it there. He's showing it to you. Exactly what he's doing. How those forms work. And he's pretty much simplifying it in a way that it reads beautifully to the eye. And it's just... it's The thing about Frazetta is... It, Frazetta makes things that are very... I wouldn't say they're simple. But he, he makes... Things look far more complex than they are, if that makes any sense. I mean, obviously, when you look at stuff like this, it's super complex, but with the figure, but I think it's also might be because I understand the figure more than I understand how to draw a horse or something like that. So, but yeah, beautiful stuff. Love me, love me some Frazetta. Man, I, I love, I'm actually going to turn it for this. Again, you're getting these, I mean, when you are, I mean, look how scribbly those are. There, there's no, that doesn't look good. I mean, when you're first starting drawing, that's probably mind blowing, but that's not amazing. You know, when you understand what's going on, but it reminds you, I, I, again, I, I go back to Bushema because when you look at the, how to draw comics in Marvel way, there's a lot of that. And when Bushema is trying to explain how you get to gesture, but that's how you get to gesture. Man, beautiful stuff. Oh, man, love that. I love it, love it, love it. There's, n I don't think there's a single finished piece in here um, at all, which is nice because sometimes, oh, there's a finished, now you lied. I think that's a finished piece there. I probably went past like eight of them. But th is that finished? I don't think that's actually finished. I think that's just trying to figure out the color. Um, so I may have lied in there, but man. God. Yep, that is man. Look at that. I imagine that's probably just something he drew on like a paper towel for fun, <laughs> and then just like threw it out or something. Well, obviously he didn't throw it out because we have it, but I don't know. Man, some iconic pieces were, by the way, there's a lot of iconic stuff in here that we're seeing kind of that preliminary, I don't know how they managed to find it, 
I mean, I imagine he probably had it like in a sketchbook or something, but you can also pick this book up as well. I know this book was out of print for a long time and it's hard to get anywhere else, but you can pick this up from the Frazetta Museum. They're still selling it. It's, it's a bit pricey. It's 40 bucks. But I mean, to get stuff like this it is priceless to me. I mean, you know, if you're somebody who's interested in art or trying to get art, trying to get into art, I really do believe this 100%. You're going to get more from this paying $40 than you would get for a $50,000, uh, you know, art college or something or you know 50,000 semester or whatever 50,000 a year art college because there's so much information in here just get to that intermediate level practice figure drawing um, just try to simplify as best as you possibly can there's loads of videos on YouTube uh, understand things like perspective loads I mean Dan Bradshaw is a big um, perspective guy he teach you everything you need to know about simple perspective all the way to advanced perspective there's great books out there you can get for like 30 40 dollars um like the scott robertson uh book is really helpful uh, there's so many books out there and so many other resources and then once you get to the intermediate level and rosetta will like rosetta rosetta will get you there all right here we are on our final rosetta book and we are going to open this bad boy up we're going to take a look at it. All right. Now, this is another Vanguard book that came out um, that I that I like. I think it's I don't think it's bad. Um, again, I didn't pick up that Tashin book, but I think this is totally good enough. Um, I get some interesting stuff in here. So of course we get this beautiful work here to our left and uh, it's really jarring to look at this at this uh size it's a rather large book but i really do love looking at rosetta at the size this is definitely the uh biggest book of rosetta books so other than the tashin one of course and uh yeah, we get that Tarzan piece again. We're going to see a lot of the same stuff, though. I do apologize, but this is more finished works of his stuff. So here we go. And my goodness, take a look at that. And again, this size is insane to look at because you can pretty much look at... You can go to every kind of microscopic level that you want to. Um, man. Again, that Bridgman stuff's going on, but there's so much flow to his work, and man, I just watched Steve Rude actually uh, uh, do a replica of this in watercolor, and it was very cool to look at. Um, I'm a huge Steve Rude fan, and he he really appreciates artists like Frazetta. And of course, man, look at that color there. Um, and the funny thing is, is the more I look at these amazing artists work in color, the more it makes me want to work in color because I work in mainly black and white. Um, occasionally I will dabble with uh, watercolor. Beautiful piece here. Again, it's very nice to kind of see Frank Rosetta doing something that's not fantasy sometimes um, because I, I always associate him with fantasy. But when he does some sci-fi stuff, it's very cool. And then, of course, we get another beautiful beautiful drawing here i think it's called spider-man spider-man it's called i don't know if he got in a little bit of trouble maybe you know whatever i don't think he used it for for an actual book or anything but he refers to it as spider-man um, and i love i love those arms there again not everything's gonna be perfect i mean that arm doesn't look as beefy as that arm but it still looks great, still reads beautifully. I mean, come on, look how cool that is. Um, I love being able to look at this artwork. It's such a large size. I would advise this book. I think it's only like 40 bucks. It's the same price as this book. So, I mean, I would pick up both if you can. Sometimes this is on sale. I don't know if this is readily available on Amazon. At one point it was, um, but yeah, man. 
Just so much brilliance going on there. Oh, look at that flow of that cape there. And that beautiful anatomy. That beautiful, beautiful Bridgman right on the page. Realized. Sorry, I keep my cord in my camera keeps hitting. Man, I love the color. That it, it, It's true. He uses such muted colors. And um, it really pops when you sort of get any kind of color that isn't like a darkish color. Man. So cool. Who draws a better, you know, guy on a horse? Heavy metal used it for a cover and... I mean, I, I would assume that, you know, putting present in heavy metal would be a very good idea. I wonder how much money he made just off of that. I mean, I, I don't like to think about money, of course, with art, because you should do it for the enjoyment, but you do wonder how much he made off of, you know, Death Dealer alone. I love this one too. I love those back muscles. Again, like I said previously, Rosetta always loves to show you right before the tragedy. And uh, you assume to yourself, maybe this guy or gal can get out of this horrible situation. Yeah. Sorry. And uh, uh, fucking Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia herself. Love that one. And then we get Conan again. And we even get a preliminary of Conan in this one. I don't think we got... I don't think we've seen a single preliminary of Conan um, yet. So it's nice to look at. But it's, you know, you go from here to here. And you get a lot of changes in between. Hair changes, even the angle of the head changes a bit. Um, but yeah. Just nice to see. You know, look at that one. We actually saw the uh, the preliminaries for that one in the previous book. I'm really angry that the Battlefield Earth uh, cover is not in any of these books because that is such a rad cover. And uh, it's not anywhere, at least from what I can remember. Maybe it's in this, but I don't think so. Man. Love that one beautiful i mean there's some stuff i haven't seen in quite some time um oh here we go here's my favorite oh man i love that one i really do it's so interesting the way he uses color because a lot of it is very muted Again, like I said earlier, draws beautiful woman. Really does. The other reason why I don't want to pick up the Tashin book, and I, I don't want to sound controversial, but when I was reading, or I was watching a video of somebody going through it, I can't remember who it was, and they were reading it, and it was, there was all this kind of weird shit where they were like, Rosetta was a womanizer, and all. it's just like, I don't, why? I don't know. It's just weird to me. I don't want to get controversial and talk about politics, but it's, it is very weird. Um, he drew women uh, in a certain way. I don't know. This one I I always enjoy because it it looks like he's just making a perfect T pose, and I don't know why. I guess it's because he's falling off. I guess it makes sense, but he's kind of like in like in shock that he's about to fall. And perhaps he's going to fall right into this. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's always a funny one to look at. Sorry, I'm trying to get my cord out of the fucking way. I hate cords, man. Cords suck, dude. Can't get it out of the way, so you're just going to have to deal with it. Sorry. It gets even worse as I move the fucking thing back. Whatever. The cord's a part of the video now, so enjoy. Um, we've covered a ton of Frazetta here, so 
Um, hopefully it doesn't ruin it completely. Another beautiful piece here. Still, not no sign of Battlefield Earth here. Is it in here at all? No, it's not. That's really unfortunate. Um, but there are some beautiful pieces in here as well. Man, I love that one. Just great uh, twist going on there. And the arms sort of overlapping the torso there. Just stuff like that. It's funny. Sometimes the arm, like people talk about like the, the chest and the pelvis. Sometimes the arm will make something look way more dynamic. And then we have this beautiful piece here. And then, you know, family stuff, yada, yada, yada. Um, I do think it's great, by the way, that the uh, family is keeping Frank's stuff kind of out there and kind of keeping it relevant because it's very important that this stuff stays relevant. Um, so I think they're doing a great job from that perspective. And then we have all the books that you can purchase, um, some of them in print, some of them not. Um, but yeah, that, that is my Frank Frazetta uh, video because I thought I might as well do one. Uh, eventually one day I'm planning on doing like a documentary style video on Frazetta. Um, at some point I would like to do that into like his style, not him. I don't, I get, I hate these, like when I start doing documentary style videos, about artists i'm not going to do it from the standpoint about them i'm gonna do it from the standpoint about their art there's so many documentaries on these guys and gals about their lives and that's great and all but i want to know like i want to i want to hear about like you know how they used perspective and how they used composition that's sort of what i want to focus on there are some videos where people will explain it to you but it's not in like this documentary style. So eventually I would like to do that on Frazetta. So this may not be my only Frazetta video. And barring that they don't put out some more Frazetta stuff. But I feel like a lot of the Frazetta stuff, like you'll get something and then they'll have some similar stuff in other videos. But anyways, um, that's my Frazetta book or Frazetta uh, coverage so far. Um, great artist, probably one of the most important artists of the 20th century for any kind of, um, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, comic book art, whatever. Um, one of the most important. And uh, I thought I might as well give Frank his due. And that's quite a long one. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you stuck in there. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Where we probably will cover an artist who isn't as awesome as Frank Rosetta. Because it's very hard to find an artist who's as awesome as Frank Rosetta. Because... I don't know, he's the man. Just the man. <laughs>